Like, and that only takes place if we start them at the youth. So, so develop better catching and better running and better throwing. Develop better skill sets. Go for it. I want your teams to be better. I want the coaching to be better. I want it all to be better, right? One of the things, I mean, if you do have kids on your team, especially your own kid, if you want to play flag and you don't want to coach it, find somebody within your division that does have a team. I've coached Antonio Manning's son before on one of my flag teams. I've coached one of John Bacchus' kids on one of my flag team last year, you know, which is also a good thing because not only are you making a relationship with this kid, you're making a relationship with his coach too. He knows he's getting good coaching, the kid wants to play football, but he didn't have the time to commit. You know, they call me up and say, hey, Phil, I have a kid that wants to play flag. He might have to come play with me. Come play with me. I saw him out there in the regular season when we played in the playoffs. The kid comes up to you, shakes your hand, and I'm like, hey, coach, how's it going? You know, stuff like that. Those are the relationships we're trying to build. Plus, you know, it feels like you got a little extra work out of this kid and got a chance to for you to help his skills out. So, I mean, that's one of the things, too, you guys need to look about. And for us as head coaches, if you know kids out there that will not play tackle football, it's, it's a good opportunity, right? Get them associated with the league. Um, get them playing football. Just get them playing football. Okay. Uh, days moving forward for us. February 7th is our next meeting. It will be post-registration, right? We'll be right in the middle of it. We will not have a March meeting. We're going to have a mini clinic. Okay, so we're just going to be how to run your GAPA organization. Some bases on uh, offenses and defenses. Just a little four-hour session. Very important for new coaches that are coming into the league and any of you guys uh, that are incumbents that are interested in seeing like the way that I do things with our team. You know, it's going to be completely open for you guys as well. Okay, uh, really short there for you. Uh, we're going to have the owner of the Duke City Gladiators come up here, John Lopez. He's going to talk to you guys about some of the player camps that they have over there. How you guys doing? Appreciate this time. Um, you know, how many of you guys have heard of the Duke City Gladiators pro football? That's good. Always scares me because we're still on a new concert. This is our third year this year, and it's going to be our breakout year. We've got a lot of great stuff, and it's pro football, and that's something that people don't realize. It's pro arena football, and what it is is the concept. When I came on board, I bought the team last year. The goal I was after was creating a family concept. It wasn't about um, you know big business in Albuquerque. You know what are the chances of us getting an NFL team? That kind of deal. That's not going to really happen here. But what we do have is a family event where we can bring out the whole family, mom, dad, and the kids, to a great event. At our events, we have you know free haircuts for the kids down on the field, right there where we are. It's uh, all free. Bring your kids in. You pay ten bucks to get in. You get free haircuts. We got free jumper castles for the kids to hang out there. You know, I put mommy massages for free down on the field. So that way moms can come down and have something for them. And of course, we have Gladiator Arts, our beer, and our free, uh, our free tailgate right before. So the goal was is to come out as a whole family, not just dads wanting to come and watch football and kind of have a good time. <coughs> so last year, our biggest deal was to get out for everybody. 10 bucks a pop. And that was huge. We actually went and we had two to 2,500 people coming to our team, to our games. And this year, I think we're going to double that. We've got a lot of great stuff coming. So the two things I wanted to talk to you guys about is I really want to help out with the community. So one, we have a fundraiser. Now I know you guys aren't in the heart of your seasons right now, but maybe you can talk to the coaches' moms or even the cheerleaders or whatever you guys see that will really benefit you guys. But what me and Bill and Coach talked about was you guys can go out instead of selling candy or you know knocking on doors and doing stuff like that, you guys can start now with your fundraisers and sell gladiator tickets. We have a great family event for 10 bucks. So imagine you have 20 kids, and you tell your kids, all right, go out there and sell 10 tickets each. 10 bucks a pop, I'm gonna give you guys back 30%. That means for every $10 ticket, you can get back $3, okay? The kids go out, each of them sell 10. Most of the time, they're gonna sell them to their aunts, their uncles, their neighbors, or whatever. All I want you guys to do is to hit 100 per team. That's it. Very simple to do. You guys will probably double that, triple that. But if you hit 100 a team, I will put your team uh, on team in team league for the whole season. So whatever the name of your team is, Yaffle, Rams, Yaffle, whatever you guys are, I will at my cost put up a banner that's going to sit up in team league for our whole season. This year, we're going to be televising our games live on CW on Saturday nights. 
We have a lot of special events that are going to be coming through. So that's going to give some pride to the kids to be able to go and actually see, hey, I played for that. That's really kind of cool. So I really want you guys to take advantage of that with your kids and start getting them out there. Even though the teams aren't you know, quite set in stone, um, anybody who's interested in this, last year I had a couple of teams do it, and it was awesome. They came, and once they hit that 100 goal, I'll actually let the kids come in for free. You guys pick whatever game those kids want to come, and they'll come in for free. Those uh, you know, student athletes will come in for free on that team, uh, whatever game they want to do, once you hit that 100. So that's the first thing that I want you guys to take advantage of and really kind of help. The second thing we created was the Gladiator <coughs> Football Academy. Now, it's a first year academy that we're doing, and the way it's going to set up is I'm going to have two counts. Picture this, 150 bucks. Your kid is going to be between 6 and 18. They're going to get gladiator gear. Okay? They're going to get a season ticket to all their home games. And they're going to actually get a fun camp at Team League Coliseum the following day on Sundays um, after every home game. So for 150 bucks, you get three days. That's after three, our first three home games. And picture your kid walking around with his buddies with his gladiator gear saying, hey, tomorrow i got to come back because I'm going to have camp here and I'm going to come here and I'm going to play down on the field where we see Brody and where we see you know, Odello, we see all the kind of local guys, uh, Emac, all the guys, Serta, all the guys that are here, they're going to be the ones training these kids. Now my guess is I'm presenting it to you guys and Bill first because we only have spots for 100 per camp. So I figure you guys will probably take it real quick. But next, I'm going to be talking to the middle schools and the high schools. And I've already gone and talked to a lot of the high schools uh, about the fundraising, but I haven't really talked about the camps yet. So me and Bill, and Bill's been such a big supporter of Gladiators, being that this is our third year, I wanted to give you guys all first shot at it. He's going to send out a flyer. I brought some extra flyers here that I'll leave back there that you guys can pick up. It has my personal number on there. So you guys call me directly, and I can get you guys set up with whatever program, if you want your kids on the camp or if you want to set up and say, hey John, I need 100 tickets, I'll check them out to you, you can get your kids going out there selling them, and then at that point we can get it going. So, does this sound like some kind of interesting that you guys would like to do and you think your kids might like? Yeah. I mean, I think it's going to be a fun thing, guys. You know, with the event that we put on, I mean, I travel the whole CIF, from here to St. Louis to Chicago to all the games that we play, and nobody you know, I mean, I'm not a football guy. I didn't grow up playing football. I played the apple and then I stopped right in ninth grade when everybody grew taller than five foot and nothing. You know, so I didn't get to play a lot of football, so I went to start to work. But what I found out is when I bought the team, man, this is a great thing that we have for Albuquerque. I mean, a lot of these other places, I go watch the football and it's just football. It ain't the family thing that we have here. You know, when you come over here and your kids are, I'm out of here, Dad, and you look down and you see action going on, every game I budget 80 footballs to go out to the stands. Kind of like a baseball situation. Real football. A play game football. And these kids are out there trying, trying to catch them, but you see your kids down there getting their haircuts, getting their jumping, they're looking, trying to catch a football, they're having a blast, you know, a good time going on. It is a great family event, so I just really want to make sure that we engage you guys, we get your kids out there so they can be proud and not sit back and say, hey, we have a partnership with Duke City Gladiators, our only pro football here in New Mexico, and we're selling tickets and we want you to come and have a great time. You know, either that or, you know, having the kids down at the camps and having a good time. So, <coughs> you know, leave these flyers here. Does anybody have any questions for me? Yes, sir. But, but I, what my question would be is how is that going to work fundraising-wise? Because it's actually, it's really only going to benefit the spring teams, right? Yeah, it doesn't cross over John Paul. Right. So that's mm -hmm. not really we play all the way up to the end of June. So, we talked a little bit about that. The way I kind of think about it is, you know, if it's the cheerleaders, if it's just the spring, or even this new seven on seven camp, you know what I mean? Any of those will benefit, but I want to extend it to any student athlete. And that's why they might have already heard me speak at their high school, or they might have already heard me speak at their middle school. I haven't really heard the elementary because they're a little bit younger. Um, but, you know what I mean? This is kind of any student athlete, if they want to do these kind of fundraisers through the Apple or through Cibola or through Del Morty, I've talked to a lot of them. I mean, it's, it's, I'm offering it to it also. You know, I mean, maybe Bill can figure out a way if you have a team, you guys seem to have your teams pretty close and pretty tight throughout the year. 
I mean, you guys can kind of situate it what's best for your team for the fundraiser. Even if your team's not to the fall, they can start selling now, save the money on there, and then that goes towards your team dinner or something. So, good question. Anything else, guys? Awesome. Well, we appreciate it. Please come out and see us. Our first game is February 25th. Uh, it's an exhibition game. So, instead of it being a league game, what we did is we kind of created this. An exhibition is kind of like a glorified practice, right? So what we did is we invited the uh, semi-pro uh, Albuquerque police and semi-pro firemen to come and play against us. We're going to have uh, guest coaches, honorary coaches to kind of run it. We had Tingley on the 25th. It's 10 bucks a ticket. We're going to have everything there, fire engines. We're going to have all kinds of stuff set up. So please come out and see us, and uh, we'll uh, talk to you guys real soon.
has been more than just putting on a pair of shoulder pads and helmet. And I'm sure part of that, the biggest part was integrity. Uh, we take on the big responsibility as coaches to, yes, develop players, but we're developing young men. I mean, because let's be real. In today's society, there's a lot of men who shy upon the responsibilities that need to be taken on as men. So football is an aspect where we teach that on a daily basis, and that's also why you're here. I know I wouldn't be standing here. I'd probably be dead if it was for football. I'll be honest with you. I would have gone off probably, you know, if it wasn't something dumb on the streets, I'd have been like, you know what, let me be one of the front line of the military because that's where I'm going. I'm not afraid to do those things. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I'll be honest with you, without this game, I'm going to be here. And that's in more ways than one. Football's always been right for me. So when Coach Cherry asked me to come out, you know, I was like, heck yeah, I'm in. I love this. This is what this is about. Um, my name is Flavi Lopez. Like I said, I've been coaching up for 17 years. Uh, Ten of it was in Taos. Three of it was as a head coach in Taos. Seven years I've been a defensive coordinator at West Mesa High School. Uh, out of my 17 years, I've been a defensive coordinator for six. Uh, straight out of college, I made the biggest mistake of, I want to run everything we ran in college. Oh boy. You got kids who can barely read a book, and all of a sudden, okay, we got open exit street hole. You know, so we're talking about less is more. Now, the presentation that I'm going to go ahead and put up on the screen tonight is a little bit different than I've coached in different years. The nice part about the 425, the way we've simplified it within the staffs that I worked on, is that we created just less is more. In 2013 in Taos, I'll be honest with you, we weren't very athletic. We weren't very smart football players. So we made it easy. Hey, Base read, that's your defensive call, no matter what comes out. Base read. There's certain rules that come with that, and tell me what to do. My two inside backers, you run the defense. I'm going to make it easy for you. Lucky or Ricky. That sets the whole defense. Coverage-wise, we were athletic enough to play some bracket. We played a little man three. We played some cover three. But the whole basis of it was gap control, leverage, and confidence. Play hard, play fast, play confident. We made it so simple that honestly we had some kids that love Coach Lucky or Ricky. I get confused because of why. Really? Okay, who were the Tigers? Black, Lucky, he had a black shoe streak. Orange, Ricky, he had an orange shoe streak. We had to do that for some of our kids. I'm not going to lie, it sounds funny, but it's the truth. I'm one of those kids that ended up playing college ball. He's playing the season Bowl right now. I don't know if he's still got the club shoe streak, but he's playing. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Um, the whole basis of why I've kind of gone to a 425, and it's not a conventional 425, it's a mixture of a lot of different things. At times, it can look like a 4 3. At times, when we move, it can look like a 3 4. You know, it can look like a good old uh, Buddy Ryan 46. You know, it can look like a split 6. It can look like a lot of different things. The key thing is to have the kids be able to know what they're doing and play fast. And I'll be honest with you, when I first got to tell you, the second one on, when I got there, took a head job, and my wife, and with the rest in peace, she tells me, are you sure you want to do this? And we couldn't hit what if we thought of a boat. But I told the kids, you don't have to be a great captain if you bring your friends with you. So that's the whole premise of the pursuit. Okay, so as I talk to you tonight, you know, it's kind of an overview. If you have any questions, please stop me. Believe me, I can, I'm going to learn just as much from you guys <clears throat> as you guys can learn from me. I like going to watch the outfit on Saturdays to sit and watch, listen. Sometimes not listen. I'm not going to lie. It depends on what you're doing. <laughs> okay? So here we go. So play fast, play aggressive. The whole premise behind defense is to have a swagger. You can't be a good defense without a swagger. I don't care what that is. Again, that swagger doesn't come at the sacrifice of the integrity. Never. I'm sorry. If you're one of the, I had this at West Mesa a couple of years, about five years back, playing against Valley, and the kid decided to take it upon himself and go and spear the quarterback. And the official thing called. I saw it. Sit down. Well, coach, I don't care what he did. Sit down. He didn't play the rest of the game. Dad went to fight after the game. Like, That's fine. That's the reason why he's sitting down, because of that mentality. We're not going to do that. 
We're going to play aggressive. We're going to play to the whistle. Now, high school, they change the rules a little bit because sometimes the officials swallow their whistle. And if he's dead and you're supposed to stop, kind of deal, we play the whistle. I said, if that's the case, blame it on the coach. I'm, I've got him playing in trouble for that, too. Uh, you know, basically, <laughs> here, we're a 4 2 5 defense, but basically, it is we preach being 11. And by being 11, it's a 1 11. Everybody's got a 1 11. For it to be a gap control defense, you have to know what gap you're in, and you have to own that gap. Invite it? Nah. Own it. You're, you're protecting that gap. No one comes in that thing. Uh, against Volcano Vista this year, I mean, they're probably one of the better running backs in the city with Ty Streets. I mean, the kid, I still remember, our third play of the game, we got him third down and seven, and my D tackle is supposed to go to the right. I've got a blitz going to the A gap. He goes to the A gap. We go ahead and run dead smack into each other. Easy down block. Ty Streets is gone for 75 yards. That's the kill that's healed to this defense, especially at the high school. Especially if you have most of your free safeties that don't like to hit, I'll fall down the mind trip or something. That's the kill that's healed. The rest of the game, well, actually, he didn't finish the game. We, we, we held him. Unfortunately, we fumbled two times through a pick, block pump, we lost 35 14. They only scored seven points on our defense. So it, it's just one of those things where, you know, hopefully, our offense will go with it. Um, we say this, uh, measure the distance of the ball at the end of each play. You've heard some people say 959. You know, that's great. My deal is there is that I should not see ball carrier's jersey or helmet because it's covered in whatever uniform over. I shouldn't see it on that. that. That's my mentality. Okay? So, you're going to see 20 and 40 front. Okay? The way we did this at West Mesa this year, a 40 prompt is if we had true four D line. We weren't blessed with that this year. We only had two, so we ran 20 line. Very unorthodox to make a lot of people uncomfortable, and I'll tell you why. The two ends guys, yeah, they're your D line, but the two ends, those are outside linebackers. Basically, three, four outside linebackers. Can they get down in three point stance? You're darn right they can. They better. They're athletes, that's why they're there. Your two inside backers, they run everything. We have a label as Mike and Buck. We didn't ever interchange them. You were on the right side or the left side. Unless we had some sort of tendencies, and I was blessed that for the last two years I had a stud at Mike Mack, and this kid was unreal. I mean, our coach wanted us to run a 3 4 and put him down at the nose because he was that kind of kid. I said, Yeah, but we're wasting him not giving him a chance at the next level if we do that as well. So we stayed here. The guy next to him, not nearly as much of an athlete, but one hell of a thinker. He could think lucky or Rick. Okay? Um, we didn't have a specific rust edge, contain edge. Most of these kids here, if we line up in the front like this, they know they have to squeeze first. If there's no tight end, they can stand up. As long as when they get up, they squeeze, they're squeezing that hip level. Never taught the kids to go ahead and engage with two hands. Like some people, they teach to squeeze with two hands. Especially if you've got kids that aren't used to that, the biggest thing they're going to want to do is turn their hips and engage right here. Well, I'll give it up leverage. I'm in here, I'm going to squeeze, I can redirect whoever I need to be. I'm a linebacker. I need to be playing down here so I can redirect. It says it, I'm back. Now, we play with two true techniques. I'm not a fan of it. For example, like if we call Lucky in this situation, both these guys going to the left. Well, my nose guard, he's a three technique. Now, the rule is with the three technique, you're a squeeze player. You have to be a squeeze player because now with all the zone read concepts, you basically have the front row, which is B-gap, opposite the back if they're not a pistol. Then you have the alley, which is A-gap to A-gap. And then you have either the front row or the back door, if they want to go option or jet sweep. That's pretty much it. And then you talk about RPOs and this, that, and the other. You know, RPO kind of goes out the window if you're in space. So it's getting in space. Okay? Um, in Taos, we would line up in a 32. So I would take that nose, if it was a lucky call, he's going to line up in a three technique, outside shade of that guard. And his job is basically just to go ahead and take his nose to the hip of that guard and crash it all the way down as far as he can down the line of scrimmage and squeeze it because he's in control and he's too gappy. He's got the B gap and he's got the A gap on the strong side. He's going to show that sucker dead smack into the damn A gap. That's my kid who played at CSU Public. Kid was also a state champion wrestling, so it helps. My A gap guy, he's an alley guy. So he gets to get the mesh point. 
You know how they, they're doing all this sweet stuff? Go kiss the football, kid. Get off fast, go kiss the football. <coughs> Backers, it's real simple. Dad wouldn't move. If B gap's open, take it. Unless I call it off because of tendencies, if B gap is open, take it. But remember, you take your team in outside in. You've got the read coming back at you. Quarterback is reading his hand so he can pull and come out. He can't see what's coming here. Nine times out of ten, if that end sits, he's going to get it. If you get here fast enough, you meet him about two yards in the back. If you can time it. Okay. Again, love your Ricky. Again, Ursic, you know. Our 20 front. Nothing different. The only difference is, is that now he has Simon Will as our two outside backs. This year we ran straight 20 front. We did not run quarter. We did not have the personnel. <coughs> You know, and that's one thing I heard you guys talking about districts and this, that, and the other. Gentlemen, if you've got kids that are in that district, encourage them to stay in that district. And the hardest part for me was going and playing against Volcano Vista Coach in that West Mesa, and about 12 of those kids in that roster right down the street from you. It's tough. You know, go and be great where you're supposed to be great at. Make your high school great. You know, let's not look for the easy ticket. Because the way it goes now, I'm sorry, if you've got to go to the in the rear right, so it doesn't matter where you're at, there's still no easy ticket. And not only that, you've still got pieces of Mayfield down below. That's not going to change. Now it's in Denver. That's not going to change. Make your high school great. Okay? Mind stunts. <clears throat> Pick your lucky. That's just for our defensive tackles. Left or right. <coughs> Tim and Tom, hey, they're shaking. If it's Tim, they're going inside. If it's Tom, they're going outside. Uh, twist. We didn't get into that this year. We didn't have the athletes to do. I'm not putting my outside back and kids coming into a big gap, A gap situation. They're just not big enough. Okay? <coughs> twist T, didn't work with it. We'll stick to work with it. But now with the towels, we did a little bit of twist. And when we twist those DNs and, and tackles and play some games with it, it just depends on the situation and game plan. You know, we can go strong twist, weak twist. If I call Texas twist with a double blast, oh boy. That means I'm bringing both back to A gap and I'm twisting on the outside and Lord help you. We're going to get to you quick and then we're going to lock it up match free. Unless we call Scorpion and we, twist, we uh, spy on the uh, money back with the free safety. So Ricky called. Coach is one of them. I can't take credit for this. We have another guy that works with us. He's retired. He used to be air traffic control. He's great at this stuff. I could, I could barely draw them. Okay? So that's as simple as it is. Okay? I'm not going to lie. I think the only thing here that doesn't do it justice, if you watch this nose tackle, it shows him going through the inside hip of the guard. Our aiming point we actually want to take is the hip, near hip to the center. We want to smash that hip. In this case here, especially if the snapper's left-handed. If he's left-handed, and if they're under center as well, now you're messing with the snap. Now you're messing with the center quarterback exchange. We want to make him feel very, very uncomfortable. Don't, don't lie to anyone. The most important lane player in the whole damn team is the center. Because he's stuck every play. Okay? Make him feel uncomfortable. Now, this doesn't show because, again, the guy does slides. It's open. He can go. If he wants to, he can go. Now, it's a landmark. He knows where he's got to go in certain different situations, whether it's one back, two back. You know, in some cases, even three back, he would go wishbone or even. Uh, you know, the whole Navy concept. We have certain things. You rush under control, you blitz under control. Usually we'll get to the heel line, and then we'll work. Okay, it's all there to draw some. You're either inside out or outside in. Lucky, oh, they're shaky. Okay. Tim call. Now if you notice here, any point. Whereas before the lucky Ricky, we're going to the inside hip of the guard. Now we're really messing with the center. Now the thing with the Tim call is usually we'll call a bullet's call with it. So we're going to send both back to the beacon. And if not, we're going to should. Why should we, coach? Make it sweet. Make it think you're coming. You're five against my six. Even if you bring a backer over, if there's one miscommunication, the same way that we're vulnerable to, if one guy takes the wrong gap, one guy makes the wrong call, they're vulnerable. All else fails, it's big on big, you know, you take your chances. 
Okay? So right there, usually we'd be taking this unless there's some kind of, you know, call where we keep them up. A coverage that we call this, we call it scorpion. And scorpion is a way to play man-free, but it's also for where you don't want free safety playing 12, 15 yards off. We want him seven yards, and he's actually going to spot the dang center. And that'll take him to the back. If that center goes ahead and step this way, guess what? I'm looking for anything to come here. If that center comes here, boom. It's kind of the, like the old concept with Erlach, where we had to have the local calls with You walk him down in the box, he's in a flex technique because he's at seven yards. Let him be an athlete. Then again, if you have, you know, free safety that's softer than you know what, that's not a good thing to do. And it's, when you, those situations, you can have someone who's, can cover like a DB, but can hit like a lineman. Okay? Tom call, same thing, going outside. Will twist with the backers in the A gap. Uh, high school centers, I mean, there's a lot of great coaching going on. But still, high school center is also what the hell this guy came this way. He's taking my eyes. My first step is to go here. Even if he just does this right here, he hasn't turned all the way. He's just right here. I've got to be. I've got to be. All we're looking for is some kind of chance. If we can get to your heels, we got you beat. Now, our offensive coordinator is trying to sneak in on us. And again, this is a practice that God because it helps us figure it out. Screens. Or you're susceptible to screens to keep the <clears throat> But we have certain rules for screens too. Because usually off the screen look, there's a running back fake. If they fake the run, tackle it. That's why it's a fake. They're supposed to sell you one. If he comes to your gap, grab a hold of him, stay with him. Now that is too good to be true, it probably is. But that, the two inside guys, that's the rule. Now on the outside, we have a little bit different rules than we don't have here. We call it a <coughs> nitro. And I'll go over that here in just a bit. Let me know, gentlemen, if there's anything that you want to go over. I know there's no tight end set to draw up. <coughs> I'll just tell you this right now. If there's a tight end, okay, or whatever outside linebacker line up on the tight end side, we're going to have to up inside of tight end in a three point stance. There's no way to answer what's about it. Now, we can play some games.